Welcome to Social Ella Ministries, where we are committed to glorifying God while exposing the devil. If you've watched more than one of the videos that I've presented, or read any of the other things that I've posted, you'll probably notice this by now that I tend to call things the way I see it. But usually when I call things the way I see it, it's not just based on my opinion. I take things back to the Bible. There is a teaching, an errant teaching, as far as I can see, and if you have evidence, biblical evidence, to prove me wrong, please do. And this is not a prideful challenge, it's just a matter of if I need some correction, by all means provide it. But the errant teaching is this, that the fulfillment of a prophecy depends on how a person receives that message. So again, the errant teaching is the fulfillment of a prophecy depends on how the recipient receives that message. I believe that is wrong for several reasons, and I'll start experientially and then biblically. Experientially, how many of you have ever received a false prophecy? At the time it sounded good, you may have even tested the spirits and it truly seemed as if something was going to, was going to come to pass, but it didn't, which meant it was a false prophecy. So that had nothing to do with you how you received it because you received it. You wanted it to come to pass, but it didn't. Okay, biblically, in Deuteronomy 18, especially um, verses 20 through 22, the Lord talks about prophets, which covers false prophets, and also even a real prophet who may speak out of turn. And one of the things the Lord said in Deuteronomy 18, 22, is that if a prophet declares something in his name and that thing does not come to pass, then he has not spoken. Again, the Lord said that if a prophet or even someone with a gift of prophecy declares a thing in the name of the Lord and it does not come to pass, then it meant that the Lord had not spoken. Okay, I know there are exceptions. For example, if the Lord gives a prophecy. For example, if the Lord has a prophet or someone with a gift of prophecy tell a person that he or she is going to be blessed with a child, but they have to avoid premarital sex. And the person has premarital sex, but is not blessed with that child. That was a conditional prophecy. If the person had avoided premarital sex and waited for marriage, then the Lord would bless the person with a child. That is a conditional prophecy. Conditional prophecy, the conditions have to be stated up front, not something that fails to come to pass and then the person says, oh, that's because you had to do, or you should have done that or this. No, conditions are stated up front. Another reason why a true prophecy may not come to pass is if a person repents. We see an example of this in Jonah, when he preached in Nineveh saying that the city would be destroyed in 40 days, and because they repented, the Lord relented of his decision. Same thing with um, King Hezekiah. The Lord sent the prophet Isaiah to tell him to get his house in order because he was going to die. King Hezekiah repented, so the Lord relented of his decision. The Lord didn't prevent Hezekiah from dying. He just simply delayed that decision by 15 years. So again, a person receiving a prophecy has no impact on that word coming to pass. The only thing that truly has an impact on a word coming to pass is that it is actually a message from the Lord. And there are other examples. In 1 Kings 22, King Ahab listened to his false prophets who were deceived by a lying spirit who told him to go to battle at Ramoth Gilead because he would be victorious. But he saw the prophet Micaiah, a true prophet of the Lord, who was speaking on the Lord's behalf. So again, a true prophet of the Lord who was also speaking on the Lord's behalf. The prophet Micaiah told him that if he went to battle, that he was going to die. The king did not receive that word. He did not believe him because he had the prophet Micaiah arrested and said that basically keep him on bread and water until he returned from battle. And in 1 Kings 22, 28, Micaiah told the entire audience that if the king returns, then the Lord had not spoken through him. So again, Micaiah said that the king would die if he went to battle. The king did not believe. Had Micaiah arrested until he returned. And Micaiah said that if the king returns, then the Lord had not spoken through him. That's one of those things that relates to the Aaron teaching. If a prophecy does not come to pass... A true prophet will say, you know what, I missed the mark. I, apparently the Lord had not spoken through me or I misinterpreted something. 
a false prophet may start making excuses saying, well, it's because you didn't receive it well or some other junk. So again, when the Lord says something, it doesn't matter if you believe it or not. If he says it, it's going to come to pass unless there are conditions associated with it. For example, a call to repentance. And we see this in Luke 1. The angel of the Lord, Gabriel, appeared to Zacharias and told him that the Lord is going to bless him and his wife Elizabeth with a child. But they were old, similar to Abraham and Sarah, but he did not believe. And because he did not believe it was going to come to pass, the angel struck him mute until that child was born. Zacharias did not initially believe. Him being mute may have gotten his attention, and definitely when his wife in her old age, old years, got pregnant, then he knew that even though he did not initially believe that it was going to happen, that it did come to pass. So again, Zacharias did not believe it was going to happen. He was struck mute. Probably got his attention. His wife got pregnant. It's like, uh-oh. And she eventually gave birth to John the Baptist. Also in Luke 1, the same angel of the Lord Gabriel appeared to a virgin named Mary and told her that the Lord is going to bless her with a child. He did not ask her if she was willing. And it's not that she wasn't willing because she was based on her words. But he told her that she has been, or she's highly favored amongst women. And basically she had been selected to give birth to the Messiah, Jesus. Now Mary kind of wondered how it was going to happen because she was a virgin. And the angel told her it was going to come as a result of the Holy Spirit. And it's one of those things. A prophecy coming from the Lord, the Holy Spirit of the Lord. When something comes from the Lord, it will come to pass, even if you don't receive it. Now, I'll present in a separate video about a prophecy being blocked and that causing potential issues in your life. But for now, if you can biblically prove that a person's how a person reacts to receiving a prophecy, if that has an impact on it coming to pass, please let me know. But I call things the way I see it, and especially in computer scripture, and I'm calling that doctrine false. God bless you.